Hey everybody, Mr. Piercy here looking at uh, how we're going to set up and solve proportions uh, in a geometry setting. Now, you can use proportions in all kinds of things. It doesn't have to be geometry related, but we are talking about similar figures and anytime we're talking about similarity, usually there's going to be ratios and proportions involved. So the two vocabulary terms that you see here, we have a scale drawing and we have a scale. Well, the scale drawing is when I take something that is maybe really, really big, and I shrink it down so that it's a little bit more manageable. Or I could turn it around, and I can take something that's really, really small and blow it up and make it larger. So that way it's easier to see. Well, those proportional changes, when I take something that's really big to make it something that's uh, smaller and easier to manage, uh, or, or the other way around, uh, taking something that's really small and making it larger so it's easier to see what we're looking at, uh, the proportional change is known as the scale or the scale factor. So you might say, well, something is, you know, three times bigger than it normally is, so we're going to shrink it down. Um, if you look at any kind of model about an airplane or a car or if you've ever seen blueprints of any kind before there's usually going to be a scale of somewhere uh something on there that says it's like uh 1 to 35 or 35 to 1 or something like that that shows you kind of how it's being changed so like here we have a scale where every two inches on the drawing is equivalent to five feet in the real world that's the scale that we're going to be looking at. All right, so let's take a look at how we're going to be writing proportions. Now, when you're writing a proportion, first of all, you start off with a ratio. Now, ratio, again, is just two values that you're comparing. I'm just saying this thing compared to that thing. However I write my first ratio, I have to write the second ratio in the same corresponding fashion. So here in uh, the properties of proportions that we see, in example two, we show that we, we're given a uh, proportion that looks like this, where I'm saying A to B is equivalent or is equal to C to D. Well, I have no idea what uh, A to B or C to D might be. I just know that we're comparing those things uh, to each other. So if I take that first ratio, and I take its reciprocal. Instead of saying A to B, I say B to A. So if I take the reciprocal of the first ratio, I have to do the same thing to the other side. I mean, it is still an equation. So anything I do to the one side, I still have to do the same thing to the other side. Well, looking at the third one, so we start off with A to B is equal to C to D. Well, A to B might be two corresponding sides of two different figures, where A, to A and C might be on the same figure. But we can write a ratio uh, with parts of the same figure. So if I rewrite the proportion A to C, I have to write the other ratio to be B to D. So in the last one, again, if we have a ratio A to B is equal to C to D, we can actually take the denominator of the ratio, add it to the numerator, and still keep its proportionality, as long as whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So some students sometimes have a difficult time seeing, well, why would I do something like what we're seeing in four? Well, let's say we have a figure here, okay? And I'm gonna call this A and this C, this B and this D. Actually, no, I have those backwards from where I want them. Let me change those around. So let's say this is B and D, and this is A and C. So I could write a ratio of whatever A plus B is to B to be equal to uh, C plus D, where I'm actually comparing the whole side. You can see here, because of uh, the say the horizontal segment in the middle, uh, or in the middle-ish, um, it's dividing the overall segment, the two sides of the triangle. It's dividing them into each side into two separate segments. So we can take 
the individual parts and add them together to make one longer side. Uh, and that's how that's why we would do something like what we're seeing there. So now let's take a look at it in terms of an actual picture, how we're going to be looking at these. So here I have two uh, similar triangles. And we want to be able to write some proportions that we could use to, I don't know, find a missing side of this triangle. So they're setting it up saying that uh, side AC to B or to DF is equal to BC to EF. Okay, so what we're doing is we're looking at the corresponding sides. So here we have AC. So the side that corresponds to AC on the other triangle is DF. So we write that as a ratio here. Well, the next one we're looking at, let me pick another color here. We're saying BC. Well, the other side that corresponds to that would be EF. So that's how we would have to write the second ratio because I started with side AC of the smaller triangle. I used the corresponding side of the bigger triangle to complete the ratio. That's where the 12 over 18 comes from. So since I started the first ratio that way, the second ratio must follow the same order, meaning I started the small triangle and then I moved to the larger triangle where I use another set of corresponding sides. So in this case, I would finish off by saying 9 over x. And as we saw in that last example, all we have to do, if I really wanted to, I could simply take the reciprocals of the ratios that I already have and I will still have the same value. Because if you notice, when we do our cross multiplication, in the first example, when I have 12 over 18 is equal to 9 over x, if we cross multiply that per, those ratios together, the x winds up getting multiplied to the 12. Well, when I take the reciprocal of both of those, the x still gets, oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to get my pin here. The x still gets multiplied to the 12. And you can see the same thing with the 9 and the 18 also. Well, can I write it another way? So now, let me clean this up a little bit. Now what we're looking at is they're going to take the ratio of two sides of the same triangle. So here we're going to take side AC and put it over side BC. Well, what I'm doing, since I'm writing my, and we can write our ratios this way, this is perfectly fine. So since I'm writing my ratio as 12 over 9, I have to write the second ratio in the same order. So 12 side AC has to correspond to side DF. So I have to say DF over its corresponding side EF. And so that's how I'm going to write my second ratio here. And again, you can see the 12 and the x still get multiplied together, and the 9 and the 18 still get multiplied together. So lastly, uh, the last ratio that we saw is that we can actually take the denominator, add it to the numerator, and then we can uh, do the same thing to the other ratio. So let's say we took the original one. If I say 12 over 18 is equal to 9 over x, if I add the denominator to the numerator, I'm going to get 30 over 18. So the second ratio, since the denominator is x, I simply say 9 plus x over x. Okay. So now we're actually going to be using those properties of proportions to find a missing part of a figure. Now, to be frank, I'm not a big fan of how they're actually writing this ratio, okay? They're simply using that ratio to let us know that we are working with similar figures, that the ratio of these two, uh, uh, that the ratios of these two things will simplify to be the same number. However, if you're just looking at the ratios themselves to see how we're going to set up the proportion, it can be a little misleading. So let's look at what we're asked to find. We need to find segment JH and segment JL. Well, JH is made up of JL and LH together. So I can start by writing one ratio using just X as the numerator, since X encompasses the entire segment of JH. So I can write one ratio of 
x over 2, using what we have here, I can say x over 2, and then I can take the entirety of the kind of diagonal segment from j to g. Uh, so the numerator there would be 15 and 5, so overall that would give me 20 in the numerator. And then I'm going to use that just that last little bit there, kj, or I'm sorry, kg, so we're going to say over 5. So cross multiply, or simplify the numerator, cross multiply, and I'm going to say 2 times 20, which will give me 40 on the right side, x times 5 is 5x, and when I solve for x, I get 8. So x, remember, is the length of jh so jh is 8 and jl is you got to take the 2 away so jl is 6 now that's not the only way we could have done this problem by any means so let me pick something here let's say jl is a we could very easily set up a problem or set up a proportion with these same parts and i could simply and i could find jl first and whatever i get add the 2 to it to get segment JH. So I'm going to say A over 15. I'm going to take the two parts of the same triangle to write a proportion here. So since I said A over 15 is uh, the other way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to say A plus 2, the whole side of the bigger triangle, over 20, the 15 plus the 5. So if we cross multiply here, we're going to get 20a is equal to 15a plus 30. Move the 15 from the right side to the left side, and I get 5a is equal to 30. And so in this case, a, which again is representing segment JL, when I divide by 5, gives me my 6. And of course, to get JH, I simply add the 2, and I could get the 8. So there's more than one way that we could have set up this particular proportion. Now what I want you guys to do is go ahead and pause the video and try and go back, take a look at example one where we looked at sort of the two triangles and we just wrote the different ratios or the different proportions for it and actually find that missing value. Find out what X is and go back to the last one and, and set up and solve another proportion so that way you can find the length of segment GH instead. So go ahead and hit pause, and when you're done working these out, hit play again and see how your answers look against mine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully we uh, have some good answers here to see uh, what we have. Now, the first one, we already have uh, several proportions that, you, that we wrote that you could have used to find the value of x from the two triangles that were given to you. Uh, personally, what I like to do is anytime I have a ratio that I can simplify, I'm going to try and simplify it before I do any cross multiplication. So I'm, I'm taking the 12 over 18 is equal to 9 over x proportion, and I'm simply going to simplify the 12 over 18 ratio because it gives me smaller numbers to work with, and smaller numbers are always better to work with, I think. So in this case, x is going to be 13.5. So now to find segment GH, well, GH, I don't know what it's called, so I used a y to represent segment GH. So this is how I set up my proportion, is I'm saying 12 over y is equal to 15 over 20. Again, I'm going to simplify my ratio of 15 over 20 to be 3 fourths. So when I cross multiply, it's just easier numbers to work with. And I get segment GH, which I called y, to be 16 units long. So now what we're going to be taking a look at is how am I going to find the scale the, or the scale factor of a drawing? So remember, drawing the scale is the value that says how much something increased by or how much something decreased by. So in this case, we have uh, a key, and the length of the key in the scale drawing is 7 centimeters, but the actual key is only 4 centimeters. So the drawing is bigger than the actual uh, object, which if we were thinking about it in terms of a transformation, we would say that's a dilation that we enlarged. So we took something that was smaller and we made it bigger. So the way that we're going to be able to try and figure out what the actual scale of the drawing is to the actual figure is to write a ratio of the length of the drawing to the actual length of the key. Now this is the interesting part. This is the key part here. I'm going to rewrite the ratio so that the denominator is 1. 
So I'm going to take the length of the drawing, put it in a ratio with the length of the key. Now the length of the drawing is 7, and the length of the key is 4. So if I'm going to take something and change the denominator so that it's 1, the easiest way to make something 1 is to divide it by itself. So that's what I'm doing in that middle uh, blank. I'm saying in the numerator, 7 divided by 4. That's a division sign, not a plus sign. And in the denominator, I'm saying 4 divided by 4. A ratio is very similar in how it's treated to an equation. In an equation, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do the same thing to the left. Well, in a ratio, it has to be done the same way because a ratio ultimately needs to be proportional to something else. If I do something to the bottom of the ratio, I have to do the same thing to the top. So since I'm dividing by 4 in the denominator to create a value of 1, I must also divide by 4 in the numerator, and 7 divided by 4 is where 1.75 comes from. So the scale in this drawing would be 1.75 centimeters is equivalent to every one actual centimeter of the key. So go ahead and take a look at checkpoint question 3 and try to find the new scale if the key in this drawing was 6 centimeters instead of 7. So go ahead and hit pause and try and figure out what the scale of the new size drawing would be. All right, so hopefully you've gotten your new scale for the figure now that we're taking our uh, drawing and changing it to be 6 centimeters as opposed to 7. Well, I'm going to set it up pretty much the same way. I'm going to take the length of the drawing and compare it to the length of the key as a ratio. So in this case, I'm going to say 6 to 4. Now, 6 to 4 is a fra as just as a fraction simplifies to be 3 to 2. So that's what I did. I just simplified 3 to 2. And if you didn't simplify a 3 to 2, that's fine. You'll get the same thing in the end. Just like what we saw in the last example, take the denominator, whatever it is, and divide it by itself to get a value of 1. So in this case, I'm saying 2 divided by 2 in the denominator to give me a 1. But since I did something to the bottom of the ratio, I have to do the same thing to the top. 3 divided by 2 gives me 1.5. So the drawing of the scale of this drawing where this drawing was 6 centimeters long, says that the scale is going to be 1.5 centimeters of the drawing is equivalent to every 1 centimeter of the actual key. Now, this is something that probably most of you have seen. Uh, we don't really have to read maps a whole lot anymore, uh, but when I was learning how to drive, whenever I had to take a cross-country trip, I had to look at a map to see where I was going to go before Google told me how to get from point A to point B. Well, on every map, and you might see this like in a geography class or any kind of social studies class where you're looking at uh, a map of a country or a map of a city, somewhere on the map it's usually going to have a scale. In this case, the scale of our drawing is every inch of the map is equivalent to eight real miles in, uh, if that we would actually have to drive or walk or something like that. So we want to find the actual distance from some place called Westbrook to some place called Cooley. So what I would do is I would just kind of see what's the straight line distance between those two points. Now, you may or may not have a ruler handy, but that's okay. What I would do is I would measure the distance, and I did, and it was about one and a quarter inches. Now you see here, they're kind of providing us a setup. They're saying inches two miles. So they're taking the ratio just like it was given to us, which is fine. That's probably what I would do anyway. One inch is equivalent to every eight miles. So I'm going to take the 1.25 inches and put it over x. Oops, I didn't mean to show you that already, but that's okay. And I'm going to put it over x so that way uh, to find out the number of miles that I'm looking at. Now when you do your cross multiplication and you simplify, you're going to get 10 miles. But why is it 10 miles? Where did the units go? I think this is important to see. That's what I have here on the left. When we cross multiply, the units are getting multiplied and divided as well, not just the numbers. That's why, for instance, have you ever talk, th thought about how, why area is, say, square footage? Well, let's say you have a... Oops, let me turn my pen back on. Let's say you have a 10-foot something by a five foot something. Maybe it's a 
board. I don't know. Uh, what, we'll, what we do is we multiply the numbers together. The 10 and the 5 give me my 50. But feet times feet, we're multiplying the units together also. So anything multiplied by itself is squared. That's why area is represented as square feet or square inches, because we're multiplying the units together. Well, in this, cross, in this proportion, I have two different sets of units. Well, why don't we have to convert inches into miles in this particular example? Well, that's because when we do our cross multiplication and our division, you can see uh, at the first step here that we're going to say one and a quarter inches is equivalent to eight miles. Now, we don't actually multiply those two values together because I can't multiply inches to miles and get something that makes sense. However, on the right side of the equation, I still have something in inches. So if I divide the left and the right side by one inch, so 1.25 gets divided by one, but inches divided by inches is also taking place. Now, this is where algebra teachers have a tendency to tell you something incorrectly. They say the inches cancel, and they draw those kind of diagonal lines through them, and they say, oh, they canceled out. Okay, well, canceling must produce a zero, and anything divided by itself does not produce zero, it produces one. So the inches actually, inches divided by inches actually just simplifies to be the value one. Anything divided by itself simplifies to be one. But long story short, the inches have been taken out of the problem. They've simplified out of the problem, and all we're left with now is the 1.25 value multiplied to the 8 miles, which gives me my 10 miles. So that's how I actually get around doing my unit conversion for this particular problem, because when we do our cross multiplication, the inches units simplified to be 1, which doesn't affect the value of anything in the problem. So here, this is going to be the last example that we're going to look at before you have a couple more problems to try on your own. And what we're going to be doing is similar to uh, some of the other things we've already seen in this lesson. We have a scale model of uh, so a building called the Sun Sphere in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, well, we know the actual height of the building to be 266 feet tall, and the particular model that the person has, maybe you or somebody, whatever, the person in the example has uh, a model that's 20 inches tall. Well, you know the the diameter of the dome that you have is five and a half, five, about 5.6 inches. So what is the diameter of the actual dome? And how many times as tall as your model is the actual building? So for part A, all we're going to do is set up and solve a proportion to find the diameter of the actual dome. So we have some dimensions that we can compare and set up a proportion, which is fine. And in part B, when it's asking how many times as tall, that's really asking me what's the scale? How, you know, what would I take the model that we have in our hand and what value would I multiply that by for its dimensions to get the actual dimensions of the building? So setting up a proportion, we're going to say 20 inches over 265 feet is equivalent to 5.6 inches over x feet, where uh, what we're trying to do is figure out what's the actual diameter of the dome. So when I do my cross multiplication here, we're going to say 20 is equal to 14.896, or 14.89.6, I'm sorry. Dividing both sides by 20 gives me about 74 and a half. It's really like 74.48 or something, but I'm going to just round it to 74.5. So that tells me that the actual diameter of the dome is really 74 and a half feet, about. So the last thing that we're going to do is figure out, well, what is the ratio that we're going to multiply by to take that actual thing that we're holding in our hand and see, well, how many times bigger is the real model, is a real thing? In this case, we are comparing two unlike terms. We are two unlike uh, measurements. We're comparing feet to inches. So to figure out the, the proper scale, we have to have them in the same unit. So I always find it easier really to just, I think it's easier to just multiply the feet by 12 and that will tell me, that'll convert everything into inches. Well, what we're actually doing here, what we see, here I'm saying, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I want my pen turned back on. 
here I'm saying feet is being divided by feet, and here I'm saying inches is divided by inches. So all of the units are winding up canceling out. I'm so, oh, I did that stupid thing that algebra teachers I do that I hate. They don't cancel out. They all simplify to be 1. So all I'm really doing is I'm saying 266 times 12 divided by 20, and that's how I'm getting the scale factor in this case to be about 159.6. So the actual building is almost 160 times bigger in every way than the model that the person is holding in their hand. So lastly here, go ahead and uh, take a look at these two uh, examples, uh, or look at these two checkpoint questions. Go ahead and here in problem four, we're looking back at the uh, map, the question that we were taking a look at, and in question five, it's another question about the sun sphere. So go ahead and answer these questions, and when you're done, hit play again and see. Check your answers against mine. All right. So hopefully you have some good answers that we can take a look at. So two landmarks are 130 miles away from each other. The landmarks are six and a half inches apart on the map. Find the scale of the map. So all I'm going to do is say 6.5 out of 130. So on the map, Every inch is equivalent to 20 actual miles in the real world. And so in question number five, so somebody else has a model of the sun sphere that's smaller. It's five inches tall. So what's the approximate diameter of the dome of your friend's model? So what I'm doing here is I'm going to take the diameter, or I'm going to take the height of the new model, 5 inches, and compare it to the actual height of the model of 200, or the actual height of the building, 266 feet. And I'm going to set that in a ratio equal to the diameter that I'm looking for of the model versus the diameter that we found. Now, you could have done this with the uh, height and the diameter of the other model, of the other person's model. I just chose to do it with the, mo with the actual height of the building. So the diameter of this model is only about 1.4 inches. So that is just a whole bunch of different examples of how we're going to be using proportions to do some cross multiplication to answer questions related to geometry cores. Uh, if you're having any questions about how you set up a proportion based on you know the first ratio is set up this way, so the second ratio has to be you know set up similarly, uh, just let me know. I'll be happy to uh, help you with it. But in the meantime, guys, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, you know how to get in touch with me. And uh, till next time, guys, take care.